folks, and welcome to Mr. Musselman's online classroom. Today I'm going to show you all a few tricks that you can use to help create great uh, graphs on Microsoft Windows Excel. Uh, what we have here is an example of my Mercury class student's table on the density of granite and basalt. Uh, you know, it's really easy to take lots of large numbers of data and create uh, charts simply by using the chart wizard. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to click this button, the chart wizard. It's going to give us some options. Uh, there's a variety of different types of charts we can use, but today we're going to use the XY scatter plot uh, with no lines uh, because we're going to want to draw in a trend line to find our, uh, <coughs> you know, find some uh, data similarities and, and, and our, actually our density, excuse me, we're going to find our density. With, it, with our trend line later and compare those, those slopes uh, to one another later on. Um, so I'm going to select this data type. I'm going to hit Next. All right. Here in the data range, I'm actually going to skip to Series because we're going to draw two lines. We're going to draw a, a granite line and a basalt line. The first is our granite line. We're going to add a series. We're going to call it Granite. And I want our x values here. Um, we're going to use our mass as our x values. And what we do is when we select that little um, field selector, we're then going to select the numbers, the values that we want to use for our data points. Go back to that little highlighter and do the same thing again for our y values, making sure to remove whatever stuff is already in there. And you see we've got now some points on a graph. We're going to do the same thing for our basalt. Title it basalt. And this time we're going to use the values of basalt for our x. Use the mass once again. And for our y, we're going to use volume. And now we've got two sets of points together here. Um, our next step is to give some more information. Uh, density, oh, excuse me, well, mass and volume of igneous rocks. With our x-axis being mass in grams and our y-axis being volume in cubic centimeters. hit finish, it's going to give us our standard graph. Now, some of you may stop here, but I'd like to customize this graph additionally um, because I do see a lot of empty space and I don't have a trend line yet. And uh, there are lots of different things I can do to improve this graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of get rid of some of this empty space here uh, where we don't have any points. And I can do that by right-clicking on our values here and going to Format Axis. And here I can do a variety of things. I can change the color of these numbers, the font, the alignment, but I'm going to go to Scale. I'm going to change what my numbers start at. Right now it's from 0 to 800, the minimum and maximum. I'm going to start you know, closer to, you know, I'd say 200 at least. Maybe actually 250 is going to be even better because I don't think we have a point until about 300 on the x-axis. And our maximum is going to be somewhere closer to 750, probably, uh, maybe 775. But I'm going to say 750, see if that fits. All right. So you can see that I've now stretched our data points a bit. But I'm not going to be happy stopping there. I'm going to do this one more time. And I'm going to add in a few more numbers to help me identify um, points in between 350, 450, and 550. I'm going to make our major unit of uh, you know the tick marks be closer to 50. So I'm going to double the amount of tick marks here, as you'll see. There we go. So this will help me later on in analyzing some of these points. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for the volume side, the y-axis. I'm going to change. Uh, we don't. We have at least 100 cubic centimeters before any point here. And let's see if the 50 is good. Yeah, that should that should be all right. Um, 
<clears throat> so we've adjusted those points now to stretch over the entire graph. Uh, now in terms of creating a trend line which will help us uh, examine density, uh, we can right click these points. We say add a trend line. And when we do that, we're going to select a linear line. I'm going to say OK. And because this is the points for basalt, I'm going to right click this point again. And I'm going to adjust the color to something more close to pink, since that's the color of our basalt points. So now I've got a line in there. Uh, if I don't like that, I can just again go to format the trend line and change it a little bit. I'm going to change it to a little darker plum so we can read. Uh, with the blue, the granite, I can right click again. I can add a new trend line. And once again, I can say OK. Right click that trend line and change it to a slightly different color than the points. This blue, for example. All right, so that's pretty much uh, the easy parts of, you know, editing this graph. Now, one thing you might be saying to yourself right now is, wait a second, this this line, this granite slope seems to be a little steeper than basalt. Wouldn't that suggest that its density is greater than basalt's? Now, when we have a steeper line, um, a steeper slope, excuse me. Uh, yeah, that would suggest that we would have uh, steeper density in, in what we talked about. However, remember that our slope on a XY graph, a uh, Cartesian plane here, um, is the rise over run, the change in Y over the change in X. All right, so, however, when we're looking at density, density is grams over cubic centimeters, which would be the x over the y. So actually the less sloped basalt best line suggests that our average density of these points is greater than the line for granite. Now one way we could easily adjust this to, you know, make more careful sense of you know rise over run would be to swap our x and y uh, intervals so that mass would be on the y side and x would be on the uh, or and the volume would be along the x axis but um, maybe that's something that you can do with your graph at home so any questions you know where to find me and take care